Hey, where are you doing? Church is about to start. I know, I know. Give me one second. I'm sending my offering over to GHL right now. Sending your offering? How are you doing that? Oh, you didn't know. GHL allows you to point to their ministry via Cash App. Super cool. Can you show me how to do it? It's real simple. Here's how you do it. The first step would be for you to download the Cash App, either via your Google Play or Apple Store. Next, the Cash App will ask you to enter in your phone number or email address. After you enter in your phone number or email address, it will send you a verification code that it will ask you to enter. Then you'll add a bank using your debit card. After that, it'll ask you to enter in your first and last name. From there, it'll ask you to choose a cash tag. After you've set up your account, it will ask you if you want to send money. Here's how you do it. First, you'll wanna enter in the amount that you want to send. Then next, you'll wanna enter who will be receiving that payment. In this case, it would be the church. So you'd enter in dollar sign GHL church. Where it says for, you wanna specify that this is for your offering. Next, you wanna hit the pay button in the upper right-hand corner, and then your payment is sent. Wow, that was extremely helpful. I can't wait to see my offering this week. Hey, I'm glad I was able to help. Let's get into this week's message. Praise the Lord, Saint. This is Pastor Curtis Williams of God's House of Liberty coming into you. You know, um, I, I just want to hit you up real quick with a with a little something, you know, about our about our faith. I know we get a little shaky. We get to forgetting all about God and forget about the word of God. We forget about our prayer life. We, for, we forget about, you know, really even trying to come together and have a Bible study. But, you know, you know, we have to remember that this walk. The only way you can be victorious in this walk and in this life is in, through, and by faith. So I want us to uh, go to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. You know, a lot of people call that the faith chapter because it talks about faith, you know, all the way through it and, and what this person did and that person did, you know, and we are called to be faithful people of God. That means regardless of what goes on in our lives, I don't care if it's an earthquake. Yeah, we, we get shook up for a minute. But afterwards, we got to remember God sustained us. We got to remember that God brought us through. You know, so whatever it is, we're going through a financial crisis. Yeah, it hurts while we're going through it. But, you know, when we get through it and we get to the other side, we have to remember, hey, you know, through it all, God was still faithful to me. So therefore, we have to realize we have to be faithful to him. We have to remember that. So we are called people of faith because of God. God is faith. He don't need nobody to believe in him for him to be faith. God is faith. And God gives us all a measure. We all have a measure of faith and it's up to us to exercise that faith. Build up on that faith. And the only way to exercise your faith is to get in the word of God. And when you get into the word of God, you're able to lift that weight. You're able to exercise. You're able to get on that bicycle. You know what I'm saying? And read that word. You're, you're able to jog. You're able to, to run long distances if need be because of the word of God in you. Because the word gives you faith. Because the word of God will build up your faith in God. Amen. And we need to be built up saints, you know, and not just for the times right now, but even when the times have passed, when this is over with, Hey, you, you, you're going to need to pull on something in order to get your life back on track. Amen. So, so remember that without faith, there's nothing happening. Your faith will move God. So be more faithful than you have been in the past. Amen. So quickly go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be looking at verses one, verses three and verse six. And it's all about this, people. Don't forget your faith. Don't leave it at the at, at the at the doorstep. Don't leave it in your car when you're getting out the car. 
You know what I mean? Don't, don't leave it sitting someplace idle. Take your faith with you. Your faith is in you. So exercise your faith. Use your faith. Believe in your faith. Because if you believe in your faith, that means you believe in God who gave you the faith in the first place in order to believe in him. Ha, hallelujah. Take that one to the bank. Amen. So before we get into the word, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Almighty God, just giving you thanks, giving you glory, giving you, Almighty God, all the praise. Hallelujah to your glory. We, we lift up the name of Jesus right now, Almighty God, and, and we are asking, Almighty God, that people will be able to see Jesus high and lifted up, that they will be able to see Jesus on the cross for those sinners, Almighty God, because we need to be saved. So the sinners, you need to see Jesus on the cross. And then you believers, you don't need to see Jesus on the cross no more. You need to go past the cross and start walking into your future. Amen. For the believer, Jesus is not on the cross for you no more. He already did the work for you. So now it's up to you to start working for him. And your work starts with faith, believing that he is who he says he is. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we ask that you will anoint our ears to hear the truth, anoint our hearts to accept your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't forget your faith. Don't leave your faith behind somewhere. Don't leave your faith, faith behind like if it's 101 degrees outside and you're not going to wear your jacket. You're going to leave your jacket at home, right? So yeah, you can't leave your faith at home like that. You need to have your faith in 101 degree weather. Amen. I don't care how hot it is outside. Boy, you need to have that faith. Amen. So believe me. Don't forget your faith. Don't leave it at home. So wherever you go, there your faith is. So we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, starting with the first verse. And it reads as follows. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, to, to a person who's been on this walk for a while, you should be familiar with this. This is telling you what your faith is. Okay, faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means you don't see it right there in front of you, but you're hoping for it. You're hoping that God will bring it to pass. You're hoping that God will bring it to you. That's what it's all about. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's what we hope that God will do for us. We don't know how God's going to do it, but we're hoping that God will bring it to pass so I can put my hands on it. Amen? Praise God. It's not seen until God reveals it. See, God will say yes to you, and it might not be the yes for today, but some say faith is right now. So if we ask God and we believe God for something, yes, God can say yes right now, but his right now might be a year later. Okay? We can't tell God how to do it. And, and we're, you know, God don't have to get on our timetable. You know what I'm saying? Because he is time. And he does it when he wills. So we have to remember that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but then the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, I don't see it right now, but the evidence says that my faith is right now. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we'll go to uh, verse 3. Go down to verse 3. Remember, we're dealing with don't forget your faith. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, did you hear that? For I hear him one more time. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The word of God created 
everything. There's not anything that is made that wasn't made by the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. Jesus is the word. So Jesus made everything. So we got to remember through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God or by Jesus so that things which are seen that we can see now after the world, the world was the world was made. We can see that they were not made of the things which we see now. Somebody created everything. Wood don't create wood. Okay? A car can't create another car. See, God is the one. Okay? God is the one who put everything together. He made everything. So what we see or what we use, you know what I'm saying? Even our own selves, we didn't make ourselves. God made us. And it takes faith to believe that. There's scientists running around all over town saying Big Bang theories and evolution and all this other stuff like that. Let me tell you something. God created. In the beginning was the word. Don't that line up with what we're looking at right now? In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. Okay? And the word is with God. Come on now. They're one in the same. And all we have to do is believe, have faith in that. Amen. So quit believing in the stuff that you're seeing all the time. Amen. Because God is not in the things that you see. God allows us to get these things as we live our lives. But God is not in those things. Remember that our faith is in God. Even though we can't see God, we believe that's where faith comes in. Faith, trust, and truth. All that comes together and get your faith in operation. Verse 6 says this, but, but, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you, Jesus. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. That means if you don't believe that he exists, how can you believe, you know what I'm saying, in somebody who doesn't exist? And not only that, how can you please somebody who doesn't exist? It's impossible. So you have to believe in that person in order to please that person. That's just like me not believing I got a wife. Okay? I'm just going on about my business. I can't please my wife if I don't believe that I have one. It doesn't work. It does not work. So the same thing it is with God. In order for me to please God, I have to believe that God exists. I have to believe that God is. I have to have that faith, that mental mentality, you know what I'm saying? And then in my heart, believe it, regardless of what anybody says. My faith has to become my life. So if my faith is my life, then I'm able to please God who is the giver of life. Whoo! Praise the Lord. But without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God for us that come to God must believe that he is. We must believe that God is real when we come to him otherwise we come to him empty. We shouldn't expect anything from God if we're coming to God not believing in him. But when we come to God, we must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So once we come to him and once we believe in him, then we have to diligently seek him. 
We have to search for him. We have to reach for him. We have to pray to him. We, we, we have to start living our lives like, 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 like we know him. We can't be having him on the sidelines anymore. We have to start putting him in the forefront of our lives. We have to start letting people understand, hey, look, it's not about me. It's about him. It's about who I serve. Yes, I'm blessed. But the reason why I'm blessed is because I believe in him. Yes, I'm in decent health. That's because I believe in him. Yes, I'm able to have favor because I believe in him. Yes, I'm ever able to get a good night's sleep most of the time because I believe in him. Faith will move God. You need to remember that. Our faith in God will move God for our benefit. It's not what I say, it's what his word says. We got to come to him. Amen? We have to come to God. And we have to believe who he is. And then we read the word, we have to believe that we can have what his word says that we can have. What we can have is already in his word. And whatever is in his word is enough for us to have a blessed life. Please don't forget your faith. This is Pastor Curtis Williams of God's House of Liberty asking you to continue in this walk. Continue to keep God first. Continue to believe the word. Godspeed.